Hey, hey, hey. Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Ron, aka Ron the Art, is coming to you live. And welcome to Ron's Recap. I'm here today to recap and, re and, re and to recap and review the TV show RuPaul's Drag Race on VH1, season 14, episode 12, titled Mulan Ru the Rusical. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it, guys. Let's get into it. All right, so the episode started with the girls reading Jasmine's mirror message from last week. It was a lengthy one, of course. And they found a and of course, Diabetti found a shady way to shade. Of course, she just found a way to shade Jasmine in general. I'm sick of Diabetti. This episode just really irritated my soul, like with Dia, like... I can't, I can't, I can't. Meanwhile, it didn't quite register to me at that moment that Jasmine Kennedy has the title of the queen that lip synced the most in Drag Race history. She lip syncs, she lip synced six times within one season, which is the most lip syncs a queen has had throughout the f entire franchise. I think Silky and Simone tied for five lip syncs in a season, but she has six. Jasmine Kennedy has six, and she killed most of them, too. Let's keep it real. She killed most of them, and kudos to her, kudos to her, kudos to her. You know, that was an interesting fact because, again, she worked for it, and all I got to say is watch out, All-Stars. She just might come and clean the girls out, clean the house up in that bad boy, sending girls home through every lip sync. So watch out, watch out, watch out for Jasmine Kennedy. Okay, so on to this week's challenge. The girls have to do a musical title, Moulin Rouge, Moulin Rouge, a music of this week's challenge, you know, a Moulin Rouge, and um, and the girls have to pick their roles for it. Rue left it up to the girls to pick their own roles, and of course, it never goes well when that happens. So, <coughs> <coughs> Diabetti, Diabetti. Preferably, Diabetti is always the one to do the utmost when it comes to picking roles and picking her part and make, keeping her territory, stepping that territory because she's like, oh, I want this part, period. Like, can somebody else want the part? Like, the part doesn't belong to you. Like, sit down, girl, girl, girl. So, I was worried about that. And Sure enough, my worriness was valid because it became a problem with people, with girls picking roles and stuff. So, there it was. There it was. And another thing Diabetes said in the confessional is that comp compromises are for losers. Really? Compromises are for losers? Um, Diabetes, sit down somewhere like... Girl, sit down, sit down, sit down, because that's a part of life, making compromises with people. You know, compromises is the better way to say it. <laughs> compromises, 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 compromises. That's a part of life, making compromises for yourself, others, whatever. You got to make compromises, you know, um... So she was just like, you know, compromises are for losers. And I'm just like, at that point, I cannot with her because she's too territorial over stuff that does not belong to her. And she just hitting my nerves. So next up, the girls, again, the girls are fighting and getting aggressive over the roles. Going from Georges to Angeria to Bosco versus Lady Camden. And all type of rudeness and shade was spewing from the girls, like... Ooh, show. All type of rudeness. All type of rudeness. All type of shade. You know, George just made the point, like, I always let people get their way. And I never let, you know, make a, you know, make a mark. But I really want this role. And Jerry was like, wait, pause. Because I also am courteous. And I let people, other people go first and take their stuff. But I also have not done that. And I really want this role. But George is like, well, I can't see myself doing that role. So I want this role. And then Jerry, the nice ATL from the nice Southern Belle from ATL, she quotes. The nice Southern Belle from ATL. She let her have it. She let her have it. She let her have it. 
So that was big of injury. It was big of injury because I wouldn't have done it. So injury budged when it came to the role. Letting George just have the role. Now when it came to Bosco and Lady Camden, that one was one for the books because no one wanted to budge. So Lady Camden gave the idea to flip a coin for the role when Bosco wanted to leave the role choice to the other girls. So as it was left in their hands, like Bosco irritated me this episode too. I like Bosco. I like Bosco, but this episode irritated me. Like it's apparent that the girls are starting to like get worried about the competition. The girls are starting to get worried about the competition and their stance at the competition. Bosco should be because Bosco was the one who almost went home last week. She was the one in the bottom two with Jasmine Kennedy. So she's definitely wanting to make a mark this week and trying to stand her ground with the role. And in the midst of like Taryn, Jasmine, not Jasmine Kennedy, in the midst of like Taryn, Lady Camden down and throwing little darts at her. And none of that really worked. And it didn't work in her favor. Yeah. It became, it came, it came down to the other girls picking who would be specific for that role. And Willow had to be the tiebreaker in the one making the decision of who was to pick the role. And Willow ultimately chose Bosco to take the one at role. She chose her because she said she knew that Bosco would take it harder. And that left Lady Camden pissed and Bosco, Bosco pissed as well. You know, but Lady Camden more. It was drama and Lady Camden went her way and Bosco went her way. Like, that's the situation where I would definitely will be in somebody's ass because I want this role. You want this role. There's two roles left. I want this role and you want these roles. And both of the roles are two, like, major players. One was the host or the owner of this club, which is a good speaking role, which Lady Camden was forced to do it. Spoiler alert. And she murdered it. But I could see both of them doing that role. Like, Bosco said she couldn't see herself being the host in that role. Or the club owner, I definitely could have seen her doing that. The way dressed and all, Bosco could have pulled off that role. Lady Camden wanted that that star role, and I would have liked to see her in that role, and it backfired. Again, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, it backfired, and Karma got her ass. So, Bosco, at that moment, Bosco supposedly, you know, felt bad, and here comes Diabetti again, egging it on, as if Bosco made the right decision by standing her ground, like, girl. I am sick of Diabetti. Diabetti is so just, oh, like... I'm usually a fan of the under one thing about me, I'm a fan of the underdogs. Takes one to know one. I'm a fan of the other dog of the underdogs, but I'm not a fan of people that are just B words, I should say. Like this was a scenario where Diabetti has she's at a point where she's just being a total B in this competition to anybody to slightly get in her way. And like she and like also arrogantly arrogantly like she cannot be stopped or touched and she is not her drag is not queen on top of queen drag top it's not it's not it's not your drag is okay it's decent but it's not untouchable and i'm just gonna throw that out there so really she need to be brought down a few notches big time and i guess her um, you know mind you she was about to go home first originally or second you know in her group and maybe that's what put this fire under her butt to go so far because she is now killing it. Again, I'll give her, her props, but like you're about to go home first, second, you know, the first thing in your group, the premiering episode, the second premiere. So your drag is not all that love. I'm just saying. I was rooting for you at that moment. Like I want to see her come back. I want to see her come back, but she is showing me more and more that. Her attitude is, oh, 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 my God, I don't like her. I don't like her. I do not like Diabetti. And again, like I told you guys in previous in previous vlogs, that I try to, like, remain unbiased. I'll let you know here and there about some of my favorites. But if they did bad, I'm going to say they did bad. If they did good, I'm going to say they did good. Even the girls that I don't like, like Diabetti. 
If she did good, I'm going to say she did good. But if she did bad, I'm going to eat her ass up. Period. And I'm, in spite of her doing good at the competition, she is the B of the competition. Like, and nobody is really, like, calling her out on it. A little bit they did. Georgia's had a little moment. We're telling her, like, she was doing the most in one episode, and she deflected that. But they need to be really on Diabetes' ass because Diabetes is doing entirely too much. Every time you turn around, she's shading, she, like, aggressively shading somebody and just being nasty. And you don't have to be. Moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. Okay, so in the midst of that, you know, after Diabetti came to, you know, Bosco letting her know she made the right decision by standing her ground. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Jerry went to console Lady Camden as, you know, she also didn't get to ro the role that she, she didn't want. And Jerry, so she's like, you know, I feel you. We're in the same boat. You know, don't feel too bad. Just try to use this to your advantage. Do what you got to do to shake this role. And Bosco, I mean, not Bosco, Lady Camden started to do just that, making that role to her advantage as a ballet dancer, as a kooky English girl. She did just that. So she was able to do that. So off to the performance director where they had to prepare for the performance. <clears throat> Performance director, of course, to help the girls, who was Leslie Jordan. Sidebar, I never heard of Leslie Jordan prior to this episode, but carry, let's carry on. <laughs> let's carry on. You know, um, Leslie Jordan, I guess, is known for like Instagram comedy, stuff like that, skits maybe, with the assist of Leland being the composer and Miguel Zarat being the choreographer for the challenge. Choreography went well with the girls. Most of them seemed to have kept up until there was a slight issue with Injuria picking it up, picking up the choreography. She wasn't able to pick it up so fast. And Injuria has two left feet almost like she, she can move. The thing is she can move. She just is not much of a dancer, I should say, because I've seen her do, you know, confidently walk and strut and do some flips and turns and, and, um, but I haven't like seen like major, major choreography. Yeah, Cara, I see. Um, I saw that like they showed a few clips about of Leslie, about Leslie. Um, they showed a few clips about Leslie, you know, him making, you know, little comedy skits and stuff like that. Was it Leslie Jordan? Where, where is his name? Leslie Jordan. Yeah. So they showed a few clips. Of him, like, you know, making people laugh. And he said he did drag before RuPaul did drag. That was a long time ago now. That was 80s, probably. He's definitely older than RuPaul. So, yeah. I, I guess I got to look him up, do a little research on him. Okay, so moving on. Bosco. Bosco seemed to have, you know, she seemed to have the, down, the choreography down packed. Bosco seemed to have the choreography down packed, and um, as she should have, she should definitely have came correct, considering how hard and the the negativity and the BS that was spewed for that role, definitely should have came correct. And Lady Camden seemed to to have more down packed. She let that fire, you know, she let that fire hit her. Like, I'm gonna do better than Bosco in this with the roles that I didn't pick, with the role that I didn't want. I'm going to eat her ass alive, and I'm glad she used that fuel. Again, the underdog. The underdog energy. But, um, yeah. Lady Camden, she was ready to take this challenge home and make Bosco eat her shit. And I was here for it. She literally wanted to make Bosco eat her shit. Like, she did a whole lot for this role and aggressively took this role, and that, that you should better, you better wipe the fucking floor with this role. So, on to the makeup room. The girls are bonding over conversation about their background in dance. And it seems that a few of them had experience, you know, dancing experience in six kids, like Georges and Bosco. Bosco is self-taught. Well, no, I'm sorry. Georges is self-taught. Georges is self-taught when Bosco got training from her grandmother. Cute, cute, cute. 
So on to the actual rusical on the stage. Lip syncing and full blown performing. I actually like the rusical a lot because a lot of those plays and like musicals they do on the stage, I don't really be understanding and feeling it. So I'm glad that they actually did one that I actually liked and I vibe to. So they did the rusical. I liked it a lot. And the girl and most of the girls killed it. I felt like a lot of them, like there was nobody that did just super bad in my opinion. Some were just that good as well. I felt, honestly, Bosco and Lady Camden, they both were the stars of the show, and it showed. Also, Willow was a good person in that the rusical. Willow was a good person in the rusical. Lady Camden killed it, and it, you know, like, she killed it as the, you know, the host of the club, and she really made it a little kooky and went, used it to her advantage, and even Bosco. Bosco did pretty well, in my opinion. She did pretty darn well with that, you know, performance in it. And, yeah. So, on to the runway. On to the runway, on to the runway. <clears throat> Lady Camden killed it on the runway. It gave Ice Queen. I think the little vest shirt idea could have went a little bit harder, in my opinion. Could maybe had a little bit more for like little sparkles or whatever she had on there but she definitely understood the assignment and the outfit was it was dope it was dope it was dope it was it gave what needed to be gave she gave bosco shiny with spears and revealing but 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 a big ass but given the same two three piece outfits that we've seen from her several times the last three four weeks i'm tired of it like i'm surprised that they let her get away with this four weeks in a row like that has a two like a piece here covering over the chest, a piece here, and a piece down there. Like, and she's done that look with like different fabrics and a different aesthetics, but it's been that, like that every time where she's wearing heels and showing off her body with those three pieces. And I'm just like, girl, we need to see something else. Give a gown or something. Try something else, give edge, because Bosco, that is not it. For the last four or five weeks, you've gave the same damn situation and they need to be on her ass about that because Bosco is kind of, at this point just kind of skating by. Like I said, I like Bosco. I fuck with Bosco. But I'm not going to excuse the the stagnant the stagnant the stagnantness in her performance. I'm not going to excuse the stagnantness in her performance. The I'm just not going to do that. I'm not for that. So on to Willow. You know, Willow in the runway, I didn't quite understand the look. I didn't quite understand her look, but she sticks to her kooky, weird stuff, and it always worked for her, of course. And Jiria, she called it Galactic, Galactic Mermaid Queen. I saw it. I, I believed it was the Galactic you know, Mermaid Queen. Blue aqua with like nice smooth patterns cut out over it. I wish it had been a little bit like a different material, but it worked. She understood the assignment as well. Diabetti, the Kiss, you know, the Kiss Rockstar group inspired look with shark, sharp spikes giving shiny metal Rockstar. Like I loved it. It was unique and memorable. Like again, as much as I do not like Diabetti, she, she's been really turning it up. I'm going to give her her props. She's like turning it up in this competition and she's, she's going to be one to beat. I feel like she's going to be one to beat in the competition. I do. I do. I do feel that way. Next up, Deja Sky. I didn't quite understand her look as well. She quoted evil galactic queen. And I'm like, what? By the way, the theme of this runway was titled mirrors. And Deja Sky, I did not see a damn mirror in sight. I don't know what the hell was going on. It was not given what needed to be gave. Love. You you, you was came off that high from last week from that snatch game that you didn't have to, well, technically a week before last because everybody did so bad. And in that lip sync, I mean, in that um snatch game, that last week's episode was dedicated to all lip syncs to everybody minus her because she did, she was the only person that performed well in that, in that snatch game. So yeah, like 
You came off that high and you went down. Now, I will give her that performance. That performance she killed on in the actual musical. Definitely. She had like little Kim's part or that that character in that in that musical or musical, I should say. She killed it. I like the energy she embodied, but on the damn runway, it was not given what needed to be gave. No ma'am. No ma'am, no ma'am. Deja Sky. On to George's. She it said a Cardi B. She said a Cardi B inspired look, she said. I didn't quite understand it either. You know, it was revealing slightly and it was different for her. She used to go to a little body like silhouette situation. It was different and it, I, I will applaud her for that. This look also had like leather knee high black leather boots. Leather knee high boots. <laughs> leather knee high black boots. Different, but not super good different. Okay, different. Not good different, if that makes sense. All right, so to the judging. The judging, the judging, the judging. They a Bosco ass up on that damn judging panel, as they should have. They hated Bosco's performance. Now, when it came to that performance, her being the main character, I honestly thought she did amazing on in the, in the musical, on the musical. They felt she could have took it further when I thought she did pretty good. And finally, they they addressed her in this repeated corset. And I was wondering when they was going to do that because she's been doing this shit for weeks now. They addressed her repeated corset with that two, three piece look. And Bosco got red again. And she, like, she's getting ahead of herself. She's kind of, man, like I said, I think on one hand, she's getting a little nervous and getting shook by the competition. Another hand, she is getting a little arrogant as well. Pipe down, sis. Pipe down, pipe down, pipe down. Like, Bosco, I like you, but it's not given. Like, the runway, for me, it was the runway. I'm like, girl, go on back in that drawing board with the runway. We're doing constant things that we've seen before, just with different aesthetics. But it's, it's the same design, pretty much. <laughs> I want to say different material. Excuse me. And, um, yeah, like, Bosco put us together. I think I thought that she did pretty good. They ate her up on that, about the, about being the main character. They just thought she could have took it even more further than she did. And maybe she could have, but I thought that her performance was well. It wasn't bad at all, by far. So from there, next up, you know, most of the girls understood the assignment this week. But Angelia felt a little short in the performance. Yeah, killed her runaway. When Daya Betty, no, when Deja, I'm sorry, Deja was the exact opposite. Like, good performance, but not so good runway. And Georgia's could have been a little better on both ends. Runway and performance. But I feel like her performance was better than her runway. Ultimately, all of that resulted into Lady Camden winning this week's challenge, which was super, super deserving, super deserving, super deserving, because I'm like, she did what she needed to do. Lady Camden really made Bosco eat her shit. Like, all that riffraff that Bosco was doing about that role, and even though you did good, in my opinion, the judges didn't feel that way. You got ate up for the runway and the damn musical, and... Lady Camden rose above all of that. She got praised for the runway and the freaking musical. And a part that she didn't even want. That you forced her out of. And Karma ate her ass up. And ate her up and ate her up. As, as Lady Camden rose, Bosco fell. And like I said, she was being nasty about it too. So it served her right. I think she got a lesson learned from that too. I was happy to see the results of that because... The cocky interaction that, you know, Bosco had with Lady Camden earlier in the episode was not it. It was not it. It was not it, baby. Okay, so next up, it resulted to Diabetti being safe. Willow was safe. And then Jerry was safe. Making Bosco, Georges, and Deja Scott at the bottom three. Deja Scott resulted into being safe. Ultimately, making Georges and Bosco the bottom two queens to lip sync. 
Coach came to show. The lip sync came. It was time for the lip sync. Georgia's eight boss go up in that lip sync. You know, it was a dance number song, a Whitney Houston song. It was a dance number version of it. And Georgia's hit every beat, in my opinion. Hit every single beat. Every single beat. Every single beat. Giving like Lil' Kim vibes and everything in the song. Like, <laughs> like robot. Like, she killed it. She killed it. She killed it. And Georgia's won a lip sync. Ultimately, sending Bosco home. What do you know? Okay, push the show to say bye bye to Bosco. Bosco had that golden bar chocolate, the golden chocolate bar, saving her and solidifying her to be safe this week by random. So finally, it appeared. And it, oh my God, it took what, 12 episodes for that damn golden bar to appear? Yes, 12 episodes. Like, I was wondering who had it and when it was going to appear. If you guys don't know, one day at the beginning of the season, the 14 girls had to pick a chocolate bar out of random out of this box. One of them was a golden chocolate bar. Whoever had that golden chocolate bar, when it was time to be eliminated, would be safe from elimination that week. Only one person had that immunity, pretty much. And finally, it took 12 episodes for someone to have it, to us to see it. And it was Bosco, which is a strong competitor. She had it and saved her. And I know she is about to come back with vengeance at this point. She better. She better come back with vengeance. She better, she better, she better. So the episode ended and we went to the Untuck episode. Untuck, you know. Also in the episode, let's rewind a little bit. Also in the episode of Drag Race, the notorious question that RuPaul always asks. Who do you think should go home and why? He always asks this question to the girls. Who do you think should go home and why? And it always shakes stuff up. It always typically shakes stuff up either. More than likely, they're either going to say one queen. Or it's a split like decision. Either they're going to say one queen. Everybody's jumping in. Just saying that, you know, based on this week, I want to say this. Or based on track record, I want to say that person. And Bosco was the one that pretty much everybody's name said. She, Bosco, was the, the person to say somebody else's name, of course, saying Georges. She would say Georges' name because of track record. And Georges was like, oh, if you want to talk track record, in the last episode where we did that lip sync La La Perusa, you were in the bottom each time and lost all of your lip sync except when it came to the bottom two. So, yeah. And honestly... Again, I like Bosco, but I honestly do not feel like she should have won that lip sync against Jasmine Kennedy, and I'm just keeping it real. I feel like now, Bosco was kind of sliding by, just stagnant, one. Two, she's also just kind of maybe a little favoritism thrown at her that's keeping her in this competition because outside of that golden bar, which was not favoritism. But, yeah, like, you talk about track record when last week, sweetheart, Georges was killed her lip sync the, on the first try. You ended up in the bottom each time of your lip syncs, except the one that the final one that was to send you home. home. Right. And Georges, I lived for that moment. Got right back with her. So back to the untucked episode. You know, everyone's answers, you know, to the to that notorious question of who should go home and why. You know, she didn't take it to heart. She didn't take it to heart because she know, you know, everybody has to go home. Everybody, I'm well, not everybody has to go home, but everybody has to say a name. And it's just asked to them, so they got to give one. And she just happened to be the one to not be so great this week. So she knew everybody said her name. She knew she was going to be in the bottom. So she wanted to dip as quickly as possible after stating a few words to the girls to prepare for the lip sync that she knew was inevitable. She didn't know that she would be in the bottom two, bottom three, but she knew that she was in the bottom two, bottom three at when it was going to come. In this, also in this, um, this untucked episode, Lady Camden, she got, you know, the family video this week. She got the family video this week and it was her mother in the UK left a message for her. Genuine, sweet, loving, and just 
words, uplifting words that she needed at that moment. I know what she did. She needed that. She needed that at that moment, even though she was the queen of the week that wasn't announced at that moment. But she needed that because of the spat that her and Bosco had. She needed it. She needed it for sure. Lastly, Bosco, Bosco, Bosco. Like Bosco, <laughs> she just was the queen of this episode, we should say, because we saw the good, the bad, and the ugly with her this episode. Honestly, we've been seeing it the last few weeks. Okay, but lastly, the last, my last note about this, this episode is Bosco finally decided to have a convo with that aggressive moment she had regarding the roles with Lady Compton. Lady Camden. They both owned up to their wrongdoing and the aggressiveness of the situation and not really wanted to go to that extent again. But I don't think Bosco gave the apology to Lady Camden that she deserved. And I'm like, okay, girl. Um, are you going to apologize? Because it didn't, that wasn't really an apology. But they squashed it and it's, it's behind them now. Or above me now. <laughs> As they like to say, it's above me now. But, um, yeah, like, Bosco was the queen of this episode. Bosco is seven. We have three weeks away from the top four. And if you ask me, there need to be a double elimination next week's episode. Because we have, this show has been carried on way too many episodes. It, it's been three, four saves this, this season. Three, four saves, and it's it's taking too long. It's taking too long. It's taking too long, and I'm ready to see some of y'all go. And my advice to Bosco, yes, you are a good competitor. We we know you can perform. You got this burlesque energy about yourself. You're, you're sexy, and you're confident, and your drag is decent. But my advice to you is step your cookies up. Otherwise, you will be going home. I like to see you in the top four. You are in my pick of the top four, but you seem to be losing your footing, love. Step them cookies up. Step them up, step them up, please and thank you. That's all I have for you, folks. That's all, folks. So it's your boy, Ron, aka Ron the Artist, coming to you live. If you're watching this with me right now on Instagram, we are live. If you're watching this on YouTube, Right now, this is pre-recorded and it's taken from Instagram Live. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe, like, share, comment. Let's talk about the recap review. How did I do? How did you like the episode? What did you like about the episode? You know, what didn't you like about the episode? You know, if you're watching this on Instagram, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the episode. Again, the same applies to you. Like, subscribe comment follow me let's chat let's talk about the episode so again it's your boy ron and i'll see you next week guys see you next week see you next week see you next week peace